morning and welcome back to the IPTKDA's Virtual Colloquium 2020, organized by the Department of Planning, Innovation and Research. I am Enazi Zazaman from the Institute of Teacher Education, International Languages Campus, Malaysia, and the moderator for today's presentation. We would appreciate if the audience can register at the link given. Thank you. Before we proceed with the presentation, I will briefly present to you the format. The speaker will present her talk for about 40 minutes. This will be followed by a Q&A session from the audience. If you have a question for our speaker, please feel free to post it in the chat box. The speaker will be answering questions at the end of the session. If we don't get to your question during today's webinar, we will follow up afterwards. Now, allow me to introduce you to our presenter, Dr. Noor Haslinda Abdurrahman. Her presentation is entitled, Collaborative Leadership, Building the Organization of the Future. Dr. Noor Haslinda is a lecturer in the English Department of a Teacher Education Institute, Malay Women College of Malacca. She has 26 years of teaching experience. Her field of interest includes English as a second language, English language teaching, TESOL, TESOL book analysis, and development. She gained her PhD in education in 2015 from the University of York, United Kingdom. She also holds a Master's of Arts in English Language Studies from the National University of Malaysia. Dr. Nohaslinda has published several articles in Journal of Curriculum and Instructions and other local publications. She is now currently in the middle of completing her book entitled Classroom Interaction Patterns. Now, without further ado, please welcome Dr. Nohaslinda. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Anne. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good morning, everybody. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about collaborative leadership, building the organization of the future. Okay. Uh, let me share. Yeah. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about collaborative leadership, building the organization of the future. Okay, so um, <clears throat> so in the, in this in today's presentation, I'm going to talk about uh, what is collaborative leadership, why practice collaborative leadership, when to practice collaborative leadership, and how to employ collaborative leadership. So what is collaborative leadership? While looking at um, uh, understanding the notion of collaborative leadership, um, I am interested in one analogy okay, by Azadis Institute, whereby um, he said uh, that uh, the concept of collaborative leadership is just like our hand. If you look at our hands, okay, fingers are all different. Okay? Each finger is different, but it is one. So be different together. Okay? And why do we need these differences? Because uh, in a leadership context, no single individual leader is so um, is understand is an understanding ideal. Okay? Uh, no leader can make a decision or have an answer that is not wrong all the time. We all, we as leaders, we also make mistakes. We all have deficiencies, uh, weaknesses, blind spots. So we need to complement each other because what, let's say, what I'm weak of, maybe another person is strong of, okay, or the other, or vice versa. Okay, so looking at these fingers, okay, 
one finger can do one thing that another finger cannot do. Okay, so that's why you have a hand, whereby you have five fingers. And um, <clears throat> and you and looking at the leadership theory, okay, the problem with leadership theory is it still follows the paradigm from the beginning that the manager or leader is this finger, the forefinger, whereby usually a leader pointing to a goal and makes it happen. They find a goal and make the organization or the people in the organization, organization to get there. Right? Okay. So we have to change this notion. Okay? So in collaborative leadership, we change the notion of the leader is the forefinger. Okay? Now, in the field of leadership, okay, uh, from the very beginning, initially it was administration changing to management, okay? And the latest is to leadership. But changing the name from administration to management to leadership, and uh, so people believe that they will change the behavior in a, uh, in a, in a, in a, in a leader. But usually it's not true, okay? They change the name, but the paradigm is still the same whereby the leader is the forefinger. So we need to change from the forefinger to the thumb, okay, to the thumb. And why is the thumb? What is the role of the thumb? Okay, now a thumb makes a hand. It's a finger that works with uh, every finger, okay, and make it a hand. If you don't have a thumb, you don't have a hand. So this is what a collaborative leadership is, okay? So we build a team so that we learn from each other because no one of us excel by ourselves alone. We need each other, okay, to, to, make an, to build an effective organization, for example, right? So, so a we cannot manage alone in the, in in the organization because it, an organization consists of people. Even in education sector, in education setting, okay, a leader is not only the person who runs everything. They need people, uh, the subordinates, to 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 reach to a goal, to reach to a vision, okay, and. If we look at the, the analogy of a finger, okay, the forefinger is where the little ears, it's little ears, big mouth, where a, when a leader um, instruct, okay, or give uh, or set the goal, and we have to go there, and the, the subordinates have to, to 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 achieve the goal, okay. So little ears, big mouth here, meaning that listen less, but giving instructions more. But as compared to the thumb, it's actually big ears, little mouth, whereby you listen is the other way around. You listen more and uh, giving instructions less. Okay? So by listen more, so we need to change from the forefinger to the, to the thumb. Okay? Because uh, when, we, as, when we are, a, but so from here in being a thumb here, we work with everybody, okay, because we we try to work in, in, in a group, okay, we try to collaborate and encourage, um, uh, what do you call that, um, participation, okay, and uh, collaboration and cooperation from the people underneath. Okay. So in, in and, and effective leadership, so it actually depends upon mutual partnership instead of authority. Okay, so mutual partnership instead of authority, meaning that you are not giving orders, but you are also asking or you you are also getting um, uh, um, ideas, okay, from people underneath or from people in the organization. So it's not one person or a, a, a silo. Uh, uh, action, okay, but it's it's, uh, it's an involvement from everybody in the in the organization, okay, and 
now we can see that leaders go globally are responding by transitioning from uh, you know the uh, the organized uh, the hierarchical organizational structure to more flexible whereby um uh, uh, whereby we try to foster collaboration, information sharing, and empowerment. Okay, but the word empowerment here does not means that a leader has no say. Still, okay, with under the collaborative leadership, leaders have the say. The leaders still have the say, but the kind of empowerment is not total empowerment to the to the uh, to the people in the organization. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, another effective um, um, element of uh, or characteristics of uh, effective leadership is to engage positively with, for example, in, in, in education sector, with teachers, with families, with students as well. Okay, so we get them to engage so that um, uh, we create, we try to create positive relationship with the different stakeholders in the school community because all the all this with positive relationship will lead to a more positive and engaging school climate okay <clears throat> excuse me okay so by creating positive relationship with the different stakeholders in the community we will it will lead to a more positive and engaging school climate because um, they are also they are also taking part in what um you know, in in how to be successful in learning, for example. Okay, even now we realize that um, now there are so many examples of um, uh, you know uh, uh, in 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 schools environment, for example, in learning, in teaching and learning, whereby the roles of uh, parents are emphasized as well. Okay, so in order for the families to play their role, so we have to engage them into the into the system. Okay, and um, uh, <clears throat> so learning is not merely, or even in schools, it's not merely between teachers and students, but it's also about uh, you know uh, because it's also about um, uh, it's also uh, making families or parents getting involved in the learning process okay especially now there are so many cases for example like bullying cases okay so as a leader okay in the education sector so how in a school for example so how do you how do you to overcome this okay you can't simply come up with your own solution but you need to engage the parents as well because they you need them to participate because um, students, for example, like in bullying cases, uh, it's not merely, it's not only, sometimes it doesn't only uh, happen in schools, but it's also outside of the schools, okay, where parents can play their role, right? Okay, um, so, <clears throat> okay, so in educational context, collaborative leadership includes the purposeful actions we take as leaders to enhance the instruction of teachers, build deep relationships with all stakeholders to understanding self-efficacy and build collective efficacy to, to deepen our learning together. So in the educational context, um, as a leader, okay, so um, <clears throat> definitely usually in an educational context as a leader, we have a vision. Okay? So to achieve that vision, it's not merely you as a leader, Okay, to take actions, but you need the people, the teachers, the uh, everybody involved in the educational context, okay, to take actions. So the collaborative leadership in, uh, includes powerful actions we take as leaders to enhance the instruction of teachers, for example. If we want, for example, let's say, uh, successful learning, right, okay, so we want to ensure that um, uh, learning takes place and it is successful, for example, especially um, on the students. Okay, so we need because the teachers are the implementers. They are the they are at the ground level. Who knows the problems? Who knows what is happening? Okay, so who face the difficulties and problems? So in order to um, to ensure successful learning, so we need to to get the information from them. Okay, so it's not by saying that when you teachers you need to do this, you need to do that. Okay, or giving we can give suggestions, but still we need we need um, uh, feedback and responses from them 
so that we then only we can try together, okay, together we try to um, come up with a solution or try to come up with the best strategies, okay, for successful learning. So we build deep relationship with uh, uh, teachers, okay, as well as, as mentioned just now, with parents because parents is also take, uh, have uh, play a, ve a very important role in uh, successful, uh, to ensure successful learning, okay, on the students, right? Okay, um, through understanding self-efficacy and build collective efficacy to deepen our learning together. So what does it mean by self-efficacy? Okay, so self-efficacy refers to uh, a belief that uh, you know, we can make learning happen and can have an impact on the learning of our students, okay? So is it believed that, um, you know, what kind of action we believe that, yeah, we have the will, we know what to do and we know how to do it. And we know uh, what is the best ways or strategies to, um, to produce a very, uh, to ensure, okay, uh, uh, a very good impact on the learning of our students, okay? So self-efficacy focus on, um, in other words, it focus whether individuals believe that they have the capabilities to meet the demands of a specific task. As I mentioned, for example, the example given just now, okay? Um, if we want to uh, ensure, for example, uh, let's say in a school, we want to ensure successful learning. So what is it that we need to do? So the individuals here is referring to the teachers, okay? Do they have the self-efficacy? Do they have the belief that um, they are capable, okay? So what they are capable to meet these demands, to make it um, to make it materialize, okay? So if we want to ensure successful learning, how do we make a, um, so we, uh, teachers have the belief that uh, what kind of actions, okay? So, and how do I do it? Do I have the capability to do this? So this is what self-efficacy is, okay? <clears throat> okay. All right, so, um, <clears throat> When we talk about um, uh, collaborative leaderships, huh? okay, uh, good collaborative leadership um, is always characterized by uh, some uh, important traits. Okay, so among them are collaborative problem solving and decision making. Okay, um, in this in these traits, meaning that as a leader, okay. So we believe that um, uh, we should be should, we should realize that it's not the leader's job to decide what to do and tell the group what to do. Okay. So it's but uh, it's more of um, uh, getting the group, okay, getting the group to consider a problem, the problem, and decides what to do, and counts on the leader to help them focus on their on their effort. For example. For example, in school settings, when there is um, when there is a problem, or when there is um, uh, I know, uh, let's say in teaching and learning, we wanted to ensure so how uh, this this can be very effective. So we get the teachers to consider and get the ideas from them and decides. Okay, so from there, then only from these ideas that we decide what is the best solution for this and what are the str best strategies to. Uh, to overcome or to uh, best strategies to to carry out, okay? Uh, uh, <clears throat> so in collaborative leadership traits, okay? So we try to collaborate when it comes to uh, solving a problem and to make decisions. So it's not the leader who make the decisions, but it's actually collaboration between the leader as well as the group members or uh, uh, let's say the teachers, for example, in the school context, okay? Um, the next trait is uh, open process, okay? Uh, open process here meaning that um, uh, so a leader, okay, does not only start with his goal in mind and, um, and uh, you know, so you have, for example, let's say uh, as a leader, you set a goal and then you lead the group to the direction of achieving that goal, right? 
but collaborative leadership means that so um, uh, in the process, uh, the process of decision making to achieve that goal is truly is collaborative. Okay, uh, it has no uh, set end point when it begins, and the end result is uh, work out among the participants. Okay, and that's what is collabor That's uh, that's what collaboration is all about. Okay, so it's like. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, definitely. I'm sure that some of you might ask, uh, for example, as a leader, definitely we will have a, we should have a goal. Yes, but when it comes to achieving the goal, it's not, uh, you, you are not only asking them to reach to that goal, but you get together and discuss and collaborate and uh, to get ideas. So how can we achieve to that goal? What are your ideas? What is your what? Uh, what are your suggestions, for example? Okay. So together we decide on. So how do we achieve that goal? Okay. So it's not a one man show, but or a one man decision, but it's a group decision. Okay. And uh, the next trait of uh, collaborative leadership is um, it's a leadership of the process rather than the group. Okay. So the purpose of collaborative leadership is to help the collaborative process work, okay? rather than to lead the people involved towards something, to a particular decision, for instance, or in a particular direction. Okay? So it's looking of the process rather than the end, the result. Okay? Uh, so uh, it's looking at, so how do we go there? Can we do it together? How do we together we reach to that destination? Okay, so it's about the process rather than about um, uh, you know uh, the end point there. Okay, it's about uh, what are the strategies. So together we try to come up with um, uh, strategies or you know uh, the best approach. Okay, to 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 reach to that destination. Okay, so it's a leadership of the process rather than the group. So we are not imposing the group on doing something. We are actually looking at, so how does this group uh, try, what are the process and what do they have to do, uh, you know, asking from them themselves. So what are the strategies, the best strategies that they can, or they, they can contribute, okay? Uh, what in fact looking at remember the self-efficacy so what are they are capable of okay so looking at their capabilities right so with their capabilities can we reach to that to the goal or to that point okay to the point that we wanted to to reach okay mm, right so why what is the reasons of practicing collaborative leadership okay so i'm sure that you are aware there are so many leadership styles and now we are uh, and when we talk about collaborative leadership why do we need to change why is the what are the reasons for this okay okay so some of the reasons are the first one because through collaborative leadership, we encourage ownership of the enterprise. Okay, so um, by practicing collaborative leadership, we by involving everyone in the decision making and uh, problem solving, as mentioned earlier, it makes what people are doing theirs. Okay, so they have a sense of ownership of the problem, of making decision. Or even of the decision of the decision itself, okay, of the solution of the problem. It makes what so it it makes what people are doing obvious, and rather than something imposed on them by someone else, okay. So well, as human beings, we uh, um, I'm I'm sure that when it comes to you know um, being um, when it comes to uh, people giving instructions, sometimes we don't feel like. Uh, uh, we don't feel like um, um, uh, no. We don't feel good, or um, uh, we don't feel satisfied. You know, when people ask you something, whereby we got, when you have an ideas of uh, you know to reach to, for example, let's say in the decision making, you have some suggestions. But if you can't give your suggestions, you don't feel happy about it. 
okay? And uh, it is said that, uh, research shows that um, employee ownership is linked to better uh, performance, okay? So when you, when, when, when um, uh, everyone is involved in the decision making and they have a sense of ownership of, uh, of the decision, Okay, so it leads to because they because it feels that it's theirs. Okay, it's theirs. So they feel that this is their decision, and they, they will try to make sure that the decision is um, is achieved. Okay, whatever that they have decided is uh, is fulfilled will be fulfilled. Okay, and then only uh, with that um, uh, with the attitude, it will lead to a better a better performance. Okay. And uh, the next one is, um, the next reason is because um, more involvement in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the implementation, okay? So members of a collaborative group are more likely to be willing to take responsibility for implementing, okay? If implementing the group's action plan because they were part of developing it. As mentioned, this is linked to the first one when they feel the ownership of the decision, so they will try to get involved. They will, they will be, um, the involvement is high. Okay, the level of involvement in the implementation of to reach to that decision is, is high. Okay, because they have a sense of responsibility. This is, this is my decision. I am involved in this. I know what is going on. And uh, so I would like to, to, to ensure that it happens. Okay, uh, all right. Uh, the next one is um, <clears throat> the reason is uh, trust building. Okay, now once um, true collaborative leadership. Okay, uh, whereby we mentioned about the open process, the use of the open process, whereby you open it to um, you know to collaborations and participations and op and cooperation of the group member of the groups. Okay, and. Um, uh, and uh, through uh, encouragement of discussion and dialogue, so it builds trust among those involved in the in the in the enterprise. Okay, so in the organization, so being um, um, uh, uh, having the sense of ownership. Okay, and uh, getting them to be more involved. Okay. They are also. They also feel that okay. Um, they, they they also. So we are also actually building the the, the trust among those involved in the in the organization. Okay, because uh, uh, especially like when we collaborate, we ask them. Uh, you know, in in making a decision, we get them to participate. We get them to cooperate. We get them to give suggestions. Okay, so in a way, they know that they are also part of it. Right. Okay, um, the next is uh, elim elimination of turf issues, okay? Um, collaborative leadership um, can help to address uh, turf issues uh, through uh, establishing mutual trust, making sure everyone's concerns are heard, and uh, helping organizations, factions, or individuals find a common ground and work together. Uh, turf issues here, referring to, for example, turf here, for example, um, you know, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, uh, we feel, uh, sometimes uh, people feel that uh, other peoples are invading their space, are invading their, um, uh, what do you call that, um, uh, their space, their, uh, their territory, okay, so um, by collaborations, okay, so when we collaborate, a true collaborative leadership. So when we practice collaborative leadership, when we involve these people in the decision making, so we are uh, we are trying to eliminate the um, the sense of you know people are invading my my territory. Okay, so this territory may be in the sense of you know for example like funding, in the sense of for example like resources. You know, okay, so. It, it's actually like, uh, so the elimination of turf issues here, um, it's actually encourages people to, because we are working together, right? So what, so no, no, uh, not, a, there's no one who tries to invade an, uh, another person, okay? And um, the next one is, um, uh, the reason is collaborative leadership 
give access to more and better information and ideas. Okay, I think that is very obvious because when all involved in an issue are, part of, uh, are, are trying to address it, uh, so they bring with them a wealth of information. Okay, so uh, as well as a variety of perspectives. Okay, getting people involved, we get uh, um, we will we will be open to we will be open to um, many ideas. Okay, from different point of view. Okay, and uh, sometimes because when when so through these ideas and point of view, and we discuss it. Okay, and sometimes through discussion, it leads to another different of uh, different uh, perspective, and in fact, it leads to another uh, information. Okay, and uh, so as a result, the solutions that 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 the, that this group arrive are uh, likely to be better than those developed in a vacuum or by only a small number of people okay uh, right um, especially for example like you know that when there is an issue sometimes we need um, advice we need um, uh, ideas right because um, as a leader if we are the only person who look at things because we are looking things from our own perspective we are looking things from our point of view probably there are certain things that we overlook okay from a different point of view that where where um uh, our group the, or people um, um in in our organization have that view so by collaborating okay so this person can come up with a better ideas and a better information right okay Okay, next reason is um, better opportunity for substantive results, okay? So, um, the combination of ownership of the process and its results, uh, trust, uh, real collaboration, and better planning yields real success in the real world. As mentioned just now, you know, um, uh, with more information that we get in with from different perspectives, okay? So we are looking at all the possibilities, right? All the consequences, and then only we come up to we come up with uh, to a to a decision, okay? Uh, <clears throat> now the next one is um, generation of a new leadership, okay? Um, what I meant here is that um, by making people collaborate, okay. In, uh, in a discussion, so um, we actually train new leaders from within that group, that new group, okay? So, uh, in other words, um, uh, we are actually assuring continuity and commitment to the issues the group is addressing, okay? So, generation of a new leadership here referring to, because um, it's referring to the people who are involved who, who were involved in the collaboration, okay? So they have the experience, they have the, um, they, they already gone through uh, the process of um, uh, how to come up with um, uh, a group decision-making, okay? Uh, from different perspectives. So we are actually training them. We actually have, uh, you know, in the group itself, so they know what does, what does um, um, how, to carry out collaborative and how uh, to, to uh, uh, maintain collaborative leadership. Okay. Okay. Um, the next one. Oops, sorry. Okay. And um, the next one is community or organization organizational empowerment. Okay. So. When we include the inclusion of all the stakeholders, right? So anyone and interest or involvement in issue organization uh, in problem solving. So when the inclusion of all stakeholders in uh, problem solving or uh, in decision making, so we are not only uh, prepared potential leaders, but um, we also lead, it leads to people taking more responsibility and caring more about what they do. So this leads to better functioning in every every sphere. Okay. Uh, so this is this point is related to the previous one, whereby 
we build trust, okay? We build on a ship as well as, so we are actually making people, by, by, by building this trust and uh, ownership, we are making these people uh, involved in the decision-making uh, uh, be more responsible and care. Okay, so when it comes to an issue, when it comes to problem solving, because they are part of the, they are part of um, uh, the people that 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 this that come up with a decision or a solution. Okay, and uh, the last one is fundamental change for the better in the ways communities and organizations uh, operate. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So collaborative leadership um, breeds more collaborative um, uh, uh, leadership and more collaboration, leading to a different way of looking at solving problems. Okay, so this in turn uh, brings more willingness to find common ground and common cause with others, and more willingness to tackle new issues and more effective and wide-reaching uh, solutions. Okay. So it builds a better ways, better in the better ways, um, um, uh, better change uh, for the better in the ways communities and organizations operate. Okay, so it's actually referring to an operation of an organization. So with the collaborative, if um, practicing leadership, community um, uh, leadership, uh, 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 collaborative leadership. Sorry. Okay. So. Um, <clears throat> we are actually looking at um, different ways in solving uh, problems, different ways in decision making, because we involve um, perspective of a different perspective from different people, okay? Uh, collaborating together and cooperating together to come up with a, with a decision or to, uh, to solve a problem, okay? All right, um, uh, now. <clears throat> Um, research suggests that um, the collaborative readership. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Research suggests that uh, collaborative re readership um, have a positive effect on student learning and achievement. Okay, um, and uh, positively impacted growth in student learning indirectly through building the academic capacity in schools. Now. Um, an example uh, given here, uh, you know, like for example, um, um, let's say uh, uh, a leader in a school, okay, or the principal, okay, wanted to look at um, um, wanted to look at uh, uh, let's say classroom observation or teacher observation, right? So, <clears throat> and um, and before, so through collaborative leaderships. Uh, so it's not merely the leader enter the class and observe the teacher teaching and uh, then giving feedback on what the teacher should do. But it's more of, um, you know, uh, looking at and working together with the teacher, looking at, so how, what, what are the other ways or strategies of good or more effective ways to ensure good results and achievement on the student. So teachers are involved. It's not the, the, the leader or the principal uh, asking the teachers to do what, okay? But it's more of um, getting the ideas from the teachers and and as, as um, because the teachers are the one who are going to enter the classrooms and teach. And these ideas are actually comes from them asking them to uh, giving suggestions or even like okay so to, to discuss on what is the best the best way to ensure students uh, achievement students to, to ensure uh, better achievement among the students okay or to ensure um, uh, uh, better growth in student learning so we the leader can collaborate and get the teachers Okay, to be involved in the discussion, so discuss together rather than giving, uh, rather than the idea comes from the from the top. Okay. okay. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> um, okay. Peter Dwight uh, come up with a collaborative leadership framework. Okay, and. Um, So 
do we the question is um do we become collaborators or do we practice collaborative collaborative leadership all the time okay 100% right okay but um um <clears throat> Uh, according to Peter Dwight, uh, collaborative leadership is actually about uh, uh, is about growth. Okay, so it's about fostering growth of different stakeholders in the school community. It's about uh, fostering growth of uh, uh, as leaders uh, and uh, about going deeper in our learning and with our relationship. Right. Uh, so Peter Dwight come up with. Um, uh, collaborative leadership framework whereby uh, it, it, uh, it's, uh, uh, leaders where it, leaders are divided into uh, four okay four types right the bystanders okay the regulators the negotiators and the collaborators so who are the bystanders the bystanders these leaders don't define any positive goals and they don't inspire collab stakeholders to collaborate they have low growth performance and have low partnership qualities uh, teachers work in silos individually and the principal remains in his or her, her, uh, her office more than being visible so it's very so the bystanders here is more of um uh, uh no is no um uh, leaders who does not define any positive goals okay and does not inspire collaborations okay so <clears throat> uh, they and they have low growth performance and have low partnership qualities okay and as compared to um, and regulators are leaders um, uh, they define goals for the teacher and the school okay and they have high performance and they control the whole environment but um, and these leaders know what idea they want to exit. For example, let's say in a meeting, um, before they have even uh, before they even uh, enter the, that meeting. So they have already set a mind. They have already a mind. They have a mindset. They have already set a, you know a decision. Okay, and um, uh, for example, let's say and then they, they call for a meeting, but the decision is made already. Okay. And uh, through this, the regulators, they don't inspire true partnerships around the school as much as they promote compliance, okay? Which um, uh, ultimately creates a hostile school climate in which teachers wait to be told what to do, okay? <clears throat> the next one is negotiators, where these leaders seem as though they are inspiring collaboration, but what they do is define goals behind closed doors and then slowly make their way around the school or district and get people on board with their ideas. Okay, so this is just like, um, uh, 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 as I mentioned just now, the leaders set the goals and then get the people okay, to that direction. Okay, rather than asking, getting them to participate and negotiate on, uh, or, uh, and collaborate on, uh, uh, so how do we achieve or, um, to, to that goal? This, this works as, just as long as stakeholders believe in the goals rather than feel they have to achieve them because they're coming from the, from the top. Okay, and the last one is the collaborators where leaders find the perfect balance between inspiring stakeholders to collab collaborate and co-constructing, building and classroom level goals. Um, they believe in a high level of transparency and honesty and enjoy a high level of performance because... Um, uh, stakeholders feel as though they have a voice in the in the process, right? So this uh, so this actually relates to um, the uh, what do you call that? Um, the reasons why uh, uh, we practice collaborative leadership. Okay, and uh, so when to employ um, uh, uh, leadership, uh, collaborative leadership. <clears throat> Okay, so um, when the timing is right, okay, so good timing is uh, often necessary for collaborative leadership to succeed. When circumstances conspire to bring a situation to a crisis point that can break down uh, barriers and convince otherwise reluctant stakeholders that they need to collaborate. Um, as mentioned just now, the four types of um, uh, leaders there, okay, because um, uh, it's actually 
So as um, it's referring to, um, I, I just want to go back to my questions. Do we practice collaborative leadership 100% and all the time? It is actually situational, okay? Situational, um, <clears throat> so it depends on, um, um, it depends on uh, uh, what kind of reactions, uh, refer, uh, what kind of reactions are needed uh, uh, based on the based on the situations? Okay. Uh, okay. So when so th that is the reason why uh, when to employ collaborative leadership is when the timing is right. Okay. So. If you feel that when there is a crisis or there is a, a decision that needs uh, collaboration, then uh, then only uh, this this is when th this is the best time for collaborative leadership. Okay, whereby uh, for example, let's say when when a problem needs um, you know conspire uh, to so you need uh, uh, participation and ideas from from different perspectives. So. This is the time to to employ leadership, uh, collaborative leadership. Okay. Um, the next one is when problems are serious and complex. Okay. This is the kind of situation referred to earlier when no one is in charge. Okay. Uh, it's impossible for anyone or in individual or group to solve the problem by tackling it alone, um, as it is very serious and complex. So uh, the seriousness and the complexity of the problem mean that it is in the self-interest of the individuals and groups involved to put tough issues and uh, light aside and to collaborate on dealing with, with it. Okay. So the first one, when the time is it's, it's pertaining to time, and uh, the second one is pertaining to the kind of problem. Okay, so if it's a very serious and a, and a complex problem, so you may need to involve okay people um, with constructive ideas, right? Okay, uh, to to participate and to uh, discuss or uh, and to to make decision. Okay. Uh, the next one is when there are a number of diverse stakeholders or stakeholders with varied interests. Okay, so in order for these stakeholders to work together, collaborative leadership is needed to build trust, both among stakeholders and in the, and in the process, and uh, to make sure that everyone's agenda is heard and honestly considered, especially when, uh, you know, the diverse stakeholders there, with because diverse stakeholders um, uh, show, uh, reflects uh, uh, diversity in in terms of uh, you know looking at uh, uh, what kind of decisions that need to be made. Okay. Okay. So um, next one, when other attempts at solutions haven't worked, so individual organizations or officials may have tried to deal with an issue and failed, or uh, a coalition may have faltered because of internal conflict and or inability to generate effective action. Okay, so probably when it comes to a crisis or a problem, so uh, some attempts have been uh, made, but still um, it, it does not work out. So probably then then uh, uh, we, then collaboration is needed. Okay, to deal with the issue. All right. Um, <clears throat> The next one is uh, when an issue affects a whole organization or a whole community. Okay, so if everyone is affected, so everyone needs a voice. Collaborative leadership can provide uh, 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 opportunity for all to be heard and, and involved, right? For example, let's say in a community when there is a problem, there's a crisis. So uh, sometimes it's not merely um, uh, a solution. Uh, uh, from the top is needed, but we need to get in order to find the solutions of uh, a problem in the community. So we need to find, um, you know, we need to find, uh, you know, get um, the information or the, the 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 messages from the community themselves in order to come up with the with the solution, the best solution. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> next one is, oh, sorry. Next one is when inclusiveness and empowerment are goals of the process from the very beginning. So uh, a coalition that has set out, for instance, to broaden 
significant political participation throughout the community uh, would do well to operate with a collaborative leadership and a collaborative process okay because such a structure would give it credibility among um, uh, those uh, uh, strength to reach and will also provide that target population with the opportunity uh, to develop its own voice and to increase its ability to participate fully. Okay. <clears throat> so how? Okay. So how to practice collaborative leadership? Lead the process and not the people. So when we talk about, um, as I mentioned earlier, it's about the process of getting into uh, a decision, okay? So it's not about the people. It's not about um, who they are, okay? So help the group set norms that it can live by and, um, and assure that everyone gets hurt, okay? Uh, and uh, encourage and model uh, inclusiveness and help people make real connections with one with one another because and only while uh, by making real connections that people uh, feel connected and um, uh, feel that um, I know they are working as a group okay immediate conflicts and and disputes right <clears throat> okay um, the next one help the group uh, identify uh, help help the group identify and uh, obtain the necessary resources to do the to do the work. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, because you as a leader, as a leader, we provide the resources. Okay, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, so we get them to to work together and to um, you know to identify. So, if it's a problem that needs to uh, or decision that needs to be made, okay, so. Um, uh, these people will try to identify on uh, uh, so how can we reach to that to a decision okay uh, next one is insist on and protect an uh, open process okay um, and you, so um, you realize that um, you know throughout collaborative leadership the open process is emphasized here is focused here okay be opened and um, open process meaning that um, getting people to be involved and participate and looking at their ideas okay looking at what looking at their suggestions okay? and keep the group focus on what's best for the organization collaborative or community as a whole so you as a leader okay so as a leader um, um, you keep the group even though you are working with with a group of people okay uh, uh, while while uh, discussing a, a problem or, or a crisis, still uh, focus on um, you know, let the group focus on the, the uh, what is best for the organization, the collaborative or the community as a as a whole. Okay, so uh, let's say in the educational setting, so as a leader, as a principal. Um, you know, when you get teachers to be involved in the decision making, get them to focus on what is best. To, to achieve uh, to, to what is best for the students, for the organization, and what is best for the for the community. Uh, okay, <clears throat> um, so I come to the conclusion. Uh, so true collaborative um, leadership, people follow people, and it's not the positions. It's not. It's not the. It's not the, you know, you as a leader is the post as a leader. So collaborative leadership is a style supported by an administration that recognizes the importance of uh, interpersonal rela uh, relationships and uh, cross-functional collaboration, uh, especially, um, you know, if in educational setting for school and student assess. Okay? Um, so Henry Ford once said, coming together is a beginning staying together is progress and working together is success okay i think uh that's it for today okay thank you dr nohasinda for sharing such an interesting topic we have three questions here um okay the first question um goes like this um some cases the in some cases there are professionals or some other elites who seem who seems to be dominating the collaboration? How do we handle such a situation? Okay. Um, uh, in 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 such cases, when people you know, 
especially in a in a in a in a, in a group there will be sometimes a person who try to dominate right to so try to control the whole situation so um as a leader because you as a leader even though it's in a group when you see that there is one who try to dominate so you have to be able that, that this this is actually relating to empowerment just now even though you are empower you empower them yet um you know you are still the leader and you have the say okay so um get them to uh try get them to collaborate okay to get them to get uh these people even the one person who tried to dominate uh, uh uh with a strong character to work together and 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 work uh in a cooperative way okay uh, because um the moment one person is trying to dominate it will it will it will affect the other members in the group so we try to um in co to, uh, collaborative leadership we try to eliminate that okay, okay. Okay. Um, actually, we have a lot of questions, uh, but mm. we only have time for three. And uh, the first one you have answered. The second one is um, in a very big organization, such as schools, where the number mm. of teachers are big, how, how do we actually collaborate that? Do we get each and every? Okay. Good question. Um, <clears throat> okay. Okay, in, in, in a very big organization, definitely, when we talk about collaborative leadership, we don't involve each and everyone, okay? We, um, um, we choose, uh, okay, we try to, when it comes to collab collaboration in collaborative leadership, we bring in the appropriate people, okay? So in discussing, in, in a discussion, in um, in decision making, uh, definitely as a leader, we have we we can identify who are the people that can who are the most appropriate people that we can bring together, um, uh, and uh, in constructive ways, okay, that um, have good information and can create authentic uh, visions and strategies. To, uh, to address uh, shared concerns of the organization. So we don't have to, uh, it doesn't, when we talk about collab collaborative leadership, we don't, it doesn't mean that um, uh, we try to involve everybody, each and every single um, individual in the organization. Okay, so it depends, as mentioned just now, it depends on the situation. If that situation once uh, uh, um, um, arise, we, uh, we choose, who are the most appropriate people to be involved uh, to to uh, to solve that kind of uh, to be in that situation? Okay, I hope it's clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, it depends on the situation how many people should be involved and in all. Right? Yes, and 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 it depends on who are the people that should be involved. You know, or right. whether right. yes. Uh huh. Okay, so um, the third question we have here. How do we help our school principals and the senior leadership team to feel more comfortable about sharing decision-making uh, responsibilities with the teachers? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think it's, um, uh, when it comes to how here, it's more of uh, uh, so, um, the strategies. I think it's more of, um, you know, how do we... Uh, uh, it's interpersonal uh, communication, okay? So when we give, for example, let's say, especially the senior leaders, uh, um, I know sometimes it's quite difficult to change, uh, especially um, uh, to change belief and practice, okay? But um, uh, in order to, to, to give, for example, let's say when we give om opinions, okay? So we try to, um, we try to come up with, um, um, you know, uh, constructive um, uh, opinions that, um, uh, and uh, the way we say it is not, uh, um, uh, is not portraying that uh, they are not good leaders, okay? And we have, mm -hmm. and we are better than them, right? Uh, so the, the, I think it's more of um, uh, how do we communicate our ideas? Okay, how do we communicate our um, perspectives, for example, giving our opinion, personal opinion and point of view. Uh, that is how, uh, that is more important. Okay. 
Thank you, Dr. Nadina, for answering the questions. And also, thank you once again for enlightening us on the topic. So basically, let me just try to sum this up. Um, today's presentation concerns the type of leadership plays a pivotal role in, a, in, a, in an organization's success. In this mm -hmm. sense, um, collaborative leadership is essential for an effective organization. On top of that, self-efficacy, as you mentioned earlier, in leaders is important so that an, an organization can achieve their aims and goals and, of course, become successful. Um, leaders here, uh, referring to all levels, including the management in the education field, as well as mm -hmm. teachers in their classroom, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So with that, um, we hope, hope that everyone, everyone who is watching the virtual colloquium has gained some insights on the matter and at the same time enjoyed the presentation by Dr. Nohas Linda. With that, this brings us to the end of the session for today. Our next session will be on the 22nd of September, 2020, at the same time, 11 a.m. Do join us for that session. Thank you for being with us today.